Live Fit Podcast, Episode 71, where Dr. Will Harden discusses the immune system. Plus, I have a special guest for you. And those muscles overlie the lymphatic system, which drains the head and neck. So it's actually very common that someone with with sinusitis or a stuffy nose will sit up after an adjustment and say, oh, I can feel my nose clearing. I can feel my sinuses draining. That's very common. There are nerve endings. And as red and white blood cells pass through capillaries, it has been shown that there are small electrical impulses being transmitted from individual nerve endings into individual cells. Do you understand how mind-blowing that is? Welcome to the Live Fit Podcast with Glenn Johnson, your resource for all things that contribute to good health. You will hear expert advice and interviews with leading authorities on fitness, food, fat loss, mindset, and the mind-body connection. Please subscribe and share this show with someone important to you. You will find show notes, articles, and health programs at livefitpodcast.com. Thank you, Brad Dorsey. Brad is my new voiceover specialist for my intro and outro. I hope you like it. I first heard his voice and knew I just had to have him on this show. Smooth as velvet. Love it. Anyways, Happy New Year to everybody. This is the first show of 2016. Yay! How are you doing? How's everybody doing so far? I have a great show for you today. First of all, Dr. Will Harden is back to explain the connection between chiropractic care and the immune system. Plus, I have a special guest interview with my 10-year-old daughter, Astrid. But first, I'd like to read one of the latest reviews I found on iTunes about this show. This one is from Cameronius, and I quote, I appreciate how straight to the point Glenn is with his fitness advice. The guests on the show are interesting and varied enough to get a broad viewpoint. Whenever I am waning in motivation to exercise or make healthy decisions, I can listen to an episode of the Live Fit podcast, and it helps me get back on track. I recommend the interview with Hal Elrod and his book for making a positive move in your personal life. Whenever you fall off the bike, just get back on, end quote. And Cameronius gave me five stars. I thank you very much, Cameronius, for taking the time to write a review and give me some salient points of recognition of what you like specifically about the show. I really appreciate it. Now I'd like to move on to the brief interview with my daughter Astrid as she updates us on her New Year's resolutions. Astrid. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Here we go. So it was about a year ago you came on the Live Fit podcast and told us your New Year's resolutions for 2015. Yeah. What were those? They were, my resolutions were to be less shy, to be more responsible, and to eat healthier. And then you came back on the show at the beginning of April to tell us how you were doing so far. How did you do? I did good. I did, I was not as shy, and I think I ate healthier, and I was responsible. So tell us some of some examples of you being less shy than you would have been had you not made that a goal for the year. I looked people in the eye when they were when they talked and mm -hmm. I shook their hand and said hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Didn't you run for a student body office? Yes. Very nice. I ran for vice president. Very nice. And you took up a musical instrument? I did trombone. One that's not very shy at all. And I would say you've been more responsible and you've been eating pretty well when you have a choice. Pretty well. There's still some work to do, of course, but yeah. you are just a kid. Yeah. So after we had your update on in April, you were moving along perfectly, right on track, and then you finished up the year successful, right? Mm -hmm. With your New, New Year's resolutions. Yes. So now you're here for another one. Yes. So we're at 2016. We're at the beginning of January. It's the 4th right now. And Astrid's going to make her New Year's resolutions for this year. And what are they? Well, my first one is to run at least twice a week, to eat healthier, to have a good year, and to also 
also work on my handwriting and my signature. And to keep that L in the word also. Yes. <laughs> so what sorts of things are you going to put in place? What sort of measures will you put in place to make sure you follow through with all of these things and keep them present in your mind so you don't forget? Well, for the running, I already marked down on my calendar when to run, like sat Saturday and Sunday and maybe Wednesday. Good. And to eat healthier, if people give me a choice of like cookies or a candy or something, I can also say no. Oh, yeah, you can. That's right. What if it's a grandparent who offers you a pile of sugar or a pile of broccoli? Eat the sugar, kid. It'll be fun. It's okay. Just this one time. It's okay. You can do it. Eat the sugar. Go ahead. Probably not. But I also don't like broccoli. <laughs> you ate some tonight. Mm. No, I didn't. <gasps> you go right back down there and clean your plate, young lady. <laughs> How are you going to work on your handwriting? What's your method for improving that? Not not as sloppy and not as fast, not writing as fast, maybe are a little you, slower. Are you going to practice it or are you just yeah. going to slow down whenever I'm, you're writing? Probably both. So you're going to take some time just to sit down to work on your writing and your penmanship? Yes. Oh, good. Very nice. Okay. Well, would you like to come back in April to update us or maybe middle of the year? Yeah. June or July and tell us how you're doing? Yep. Okay. Well, we'll see you again then. Okay. Thank you. Bye. That was my lovely and talented daughter, Astrid. So I will bring her back on the show in the middle of the year, June, July-ish, somewhere in there to update you on her progress and keep that whip a cracking. You know, keep her on track anyways. Now let's get on with Wednesdays with Will as Dr. Harden discusses the immune system and how it relates to chiropractic care. So today we're going to discuss the implications to chiropractic and immune health or immune function. You know, there was a time at which the nervous system, it was believed, was actually separate from from the immune system. In fact, the immune system in the early 1900s was referred to as the humoral nervous system, meaning humoral, meaning fluid, essentially. That is a distinct entity not under the control of the nervous system. Yet we have very, very clearly determined that the nervous system, brain, spinal cord, nerves, ultimately controls all functions in the human body, including the immune system. So in the mid 80s, there was a really interesting study done. It was actually a, a study that began in 1984 and lasted five years, which demonstrated that after an adjustment of the spine, there is a significant and measurable increase bear with me here, I'll explain what I mean by this, but there is a significant measurable increased level of free radicals inside phagocytes in the human body. So the phagocytes are the type of white blood cell that travel through the system, essentially looking for bacteria, viruses, cancer cells. And when it encounters them, it it phagocytizes them. That means it engulfs them, essentially ingests them, and then it bombards them with a negative charge called a free radical. Normally, a free radical is something we think of as a negative entity, something formed in the human body when we exercise really hard or when we're exposed to toxins. But in the case of free radicals within more free radicals equals essentially more bullets that are that are of use in breaking the cell walls of viruses, bacteria, tumor cells. In other words, when I adjust a spine, there is an increased functionality, an increased level of aggressiveness, if you will, within phagocytes, a type of white blood cell that attacks and destroys viruses, bacteria, 
tumor cells. How is that even possible? Right? Because it, it's not as if white blood cells, phagocytes, are hanging out within the spine waiting to be released by an adjustment. Phagocytes do not linger at nerve endings waiting to be stimulated by an adjustment of the spine. The only feasible explanation that of this, this uh, phenomenon is, is found through electron microscopy. An electron microscope is the tool that we use to magnify something not 50 or 100 times, but 70 to 90,000 times. And through electron microscopy, it has been demonstrated that projecting into capillaries, remember a capillary is a blood vessel that's so narrow, red and white blood cells have to go through single file. There are nerve endings, and as red and white blood cells pass through capillaries, it has been shown that there are small electrical impulses being transmitted from individual nerve endings into individual cells. Do you understand how mind-blowing that is? In other words, there's evidence that the nervous system is literally controlling individual cells. Remember, there are not millions or even billions, but trillions of blood cells traveling through the cardiovascular system. And there's evidence that the nervous system is even affecting and controlling those. So that's one means by which chiropractic affects immune function. But I think there are really far-reaching consequences of an adjustment that we cannot really fully understand. For example, when the cervical spine is adjusted, it promotes a change in alignment, which eases muscle mm, difference bilateral asymmetry and muscle tension right versus left side of neck and those muscles overlie the lymphatic system which drains the head and neck so it's actually very common that someone with with sinusitis or a stuffy nose will sit up after an adjustment and say oh i can feel my nose clearing i can feel my sinuses draining that's very common in fact the, the number one reason why parents bring infants or toddlers to chiropractors across the United States is for middle ear infections. And historically, chiropractic adjustment for a child with an ear infection in one to two adjustments will typically clear ear infections. And I've seen it dozens and dozens of time, times in children with ear infections. Is, that, is it because it's affecting a drainage of the eustachian tubes after an adjustment? by way of its effect on lymphatics or is it a result of the stimulation of the phagocytes my answer is i don't know and i can't know and that, that almost certainly cannot be measured as to how that's working but it does other methods by which chiropractic may affect the immune system well we know that an adjustment of the spine stimulates brain chemistry changes that promote feelings of well-being and so maybe just the essentially the relaxing and easing of stress has beneficial immune effects. In any case, my front desk knows that if someone calls to, to cancel an appointment because they're feeling sick to tell them, despite what else you might cancel today, the one thing you probably shouldn't cancel is an adjustment of your spine if you're feeling sick because we know the adjustment does stimulate immunity. So I, that again, it might be more thorough an answer to the question, how does chiropractic affect immune function? But it's involved. That's fascinating. It's something I never would have thought of before speaking with you, Will. And, and I have a question and it's a little bit off topic and uh, maybe a little funny, but where did the bone humerus get its name? <laughs> you got me on that one, but I assure you it has a Latin root, as do nearly all uh, anatomical structures names. Granted, I, I figured that, but since you brought up the humor um, being the liquid, uh, I thought maybe you would know, and you being a bone doctor and all, I thought you might be able to put those two together. Well, by God, I'm curious now. I'm going to look that up. I'll get back <laughs> to you on that one. Good. I'm glad I stumped you. <laughs> Uh, you know, I have a listener question, and 
uh, we hadn't talked about this before, but the question was about massage. Now I know you use massage before your your adjustments, yes. and there are clinical or therapeutic massage versus like the day spa relaxation massage. Is there a difference? What do you know? What do you know about it? I know it's not really your field directly, but well, it it kind of is my field because every single patient in my office before an adjustment gets brief deep tissue work or deep tissue massage pre-adjustment and sometimes even post-adjustment. Is there a difference between one style of massage and another? Well, certainly in terms of how it feels and almost certainly in terms of how a person responds to it. I think a spa massage, which is nice and relaxing and during which you fall into sleep, is still extremely therapeutic. I am a really big fan of deep tissue massage because I think it goes farther toward promoting physiological change within muscle tissue. Massage is thought of or historically has been thought of as a luxury, something that's done if you're wealthy and want to spoil yourself. I don't see it that way. I think massage has immense therapeutic and clinical benefit having to do with everything from lymphatic drainage to improved circulation to reduction of adhesion or fibrosis within muscle tissue that has incurred injury or has been prone to spasm or is overtrained. For example, as a cyclist, I I get massaged every three weeks and I have the massage therapist focus on my quads hams, low back, hip flexors, and iliotibial bands, that is the outer thigh tissue, because those are so prone to overuse related syndromes inducing knee pain, hip motion restriction, or simply chronic pain syndromes. So I think massage is, is underrated in terms of its therapeutic benefit. Good, good to hear. Now, if only we can get insurance companies to feel that way. So true. So true. All right. Thank you, Will. Indeed. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Live Fit Podcast. Please subscribe and share with someone you care about. Read show notes, articles, resources, and learn more about our weight management programs at livefitpodcast.com. Once again, thanks for listening and always remember to live fit.